This is Duke University. Most of the surface of the planet of Earth is ocean. And if we don't understand how the ocean works and how the animal organisms in the ocean work, the processes, the dynamics, we'll miss most of how the planet works. So I think understanding marine science is, is critical. We're looking at the foraging ecology of humpback whales along the Antarctic Peninsula, looking at how those whales feed, where they feed. They're feeding primarily on krill. How are the whales actually finding those patches, feeding on them? How much are they actually eating? Along the coast of North Carolina, should all of the blue crabs along the entire coast be managed as one population? Or are there distinct populations along the coast from here to Maryland and Virginia? How can local people use their marine resources in a sustainable way? How can communities that are dependent on fishing resources assure that they're going to have these resources for the next generations? We're really interested in what drives bacterial populations. Why are certain populations more abundant at specific times? What causes bacterial to bloom? I want to know how the world works. I'm Cindy Vandover and I am the director of the Marine Laboratory, which is a facility of the Nicholas School of the Environment at Duke University. And my expertise is in deep sea biology. We offer three academic programs, a residential program for undergraduates where they can come here for a semester, either fall or spring, or come for summer session courses. And we have a full curriculum in the sciences and also some additional courses in humanities. The master's students in the Coastal Environmental Management program of the professional master's degree spend their first year on campus and then they come to the marine lab for their second year of study and more focused study in marine sciences. Our PhD program is the research track training for that doctoral degree and the students who come into that program work with faculty mentors one-on-one -on -one and develop their professional skills and abilities in research design and analysis. The Marine Lab faculty, just like the faculty at Duke in general, we, um, we like the idea that our knowledge can be used in service of society and I think what we all develop as a culture here is Going beyond just publishing the results of our research, we want to see those results applied and used to improve, the, improve life on this planet. So the Marine Conservation Molecular Facility is interested in how we do conservation genetics and how that you know, impinges on marine systems. So we ask questions about marine systems and specifically conservation genetics. Bacteria are the most abundant organisms on Earth. They drive bio biogeochemical cycling and they play incredibly important roles in the human body and human health. So we use these Vibrio organisms, which are isolated from the coastal ocean, as a model system for understanding things about bacterial populations and communities, and also how the genomic diversity is reflected in how they cycle in the environment. One of the things I discovered recently was that blue crabs are the major dietary item of whooping cranes. And of the 290 whooping cranes that existed in Texas last year, now there are 270 because 20 died of starvation because the blue crab populations are screwed up. And so I'm starting to actively work on that relationship, the one between blue crabs and whooping cranes. And my goal in the long run is actually get things to the point where the whooping cranes could be reintroduced to the East Coast. Javier quiere, quiere poner una planta allá en, en, en Guaymas. So I asked why didn't you build a plant over there. He said, well, the place where we work or the fishermen we work with are organized. We look at the human dimensions of marine science and conservation and how humans interact with marine environment in general. I particularly focused on how humans interact with marine resources in ways that might drive to overexploitation or sustainability outcomes. All of our faculty are engaged in using technology in their research. So whether it's from a flume in the case of Jim Hench, the physical oceanographer who looks at how water moves through branches of corals, to Doug Nowacek who uses gliders. They just yo-yo through the ocean. This is a CTD measurement device, so it's measuring conductivity and temperature with depth, and so it gives us salinity and temperature, which is one of the basic things that physical oceanographers use to describe the ocean. One of the main things that we're working on is this little guy back here, which is an acoustic sensor, so it's a recorder. In fact, one of the folks uh, here, Kristen Hill, who's a student at the Pratt School of Engineering at Duke, is interning at iRobot over the summer, and she's been working quite a bit on that acoustic sensor uh, with me. My name's Kristen Hill, I'm a senior at Duke. So my job is to use the sea glider for my robot and the sensor from the Cult Oceanographic, and integrate the two to record whale calls in the Atlantic. 
Primarily I work on marine mammals and within that their use of sound, the context of those uses of sound, how they interpret sources of sound, how it's incorporated into their behavior, for example, dolphin echolocation and how they use echolocation to find food, to navigate, etc. Some of the conservation aspects are how are the sources of sound produced by humans potentially affect those animals. This is actually our newest technology we have here in our lab. It's a personal genome machine. So on this tiny chip, you have a million different wells, each of which can sequence part of a bacterial genome. If we wanted to understand what kind of scenarios lead to sustainable use of natural resources, in this case marine resources, we need to understand the social science aspects of it, but also the ecology and the biology and we need to mix them in a way that we can understand each other so we need to have a common uh, language and so we, we need to that's inherently multidisciplinary we cannot do that from the social sciences only or, or only from the biology it needs, it needs to come together so, so my work um, uh, does most of the social science but does it in a way where i'm constantly interacting with natural scientists in a multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary fashion for undergrads to come to the marine lab, they're essentially immersed in the marine environment. So students who are interested in marine science or marine biology, this is an ideal place to come because you walk out the door of your building or your dorm room and you're right there. And the other experience is that because it's a much smaller place, you have much more, well, you have one-on-one -on -one contact with your faculty. So you know all the students who do uh, research with me will pretty much come and talk to me two, three, four times a week, you know, and so I, I see them all the time and I get to know them extremely well. And that experience, you know, is, is invaluable for undergrads as far as I'm concerned. Like having a, a true lab research experience as opposed to a classroom experience. You know, you go in the classroom and you're kind of just following the, the protocol that's in front of you and doing exactly what the instructor is telling you as opposed to going into the lab and actually being posed with a question, a research question, and actually trying to figure it out and, and solve real life problems. One of the luxuries I have here at the lab is because I have such small classes and they're upper level classes. I can actually work on getting people to synthesize and learn to cross disciplines and not memorize and actually think the way you think in your daily lives. And so when I teach these smaller classes, my goal is to have people be altered for the rest of their lives by thinking about how the world works. Human beings use the coasts a lot. We value the coastline, we value the oceans, yet we abuse them. And so I think the marine sciences, the students who come here, learn a little bit more about how we engage, how scientists engage with the, with the coastline, with the waters, with the ecosystems uh, of the ocean. And um, I think, you know, there's some students who will come here and they'll just, they'll learn how to be better citizens of the, of the planet because they understand more about the oceans and why they matter. It's not just a surface to look at, and we like it because it's blue and beautiful, but we also like it because of the fish that it supplies, the crabs that it supplies, the oxygen that it supplies to us.